Um, it's really exciting to be here, to think that uh, 125 years ago when Herzl spoke, his first words, and, and I, I invite everybody to read online, uh, as a request for everybody on, uh, in, in the first Congress was to be very economic with words, because there's so much to do in two days of the first Jewish Congress, and so we're going to try and be economic in words and, and keep to our time. Um, I think, as you all have said, you know, not many people know un and understand Switzerland as a hub, as an investment hub, but overall, just I'll kick us off with a couple of numbers for the audience, and then we'll deep dive in into uh, the impact uh, environment. So Switzerland, nearing an $800 billion GDP uh, with more or less eight and a half, what is it today, million people. Um, and there's nothing that we do in the world that doesn't have some Swiss you know, element in it, be it Nestle in the food space, we're in Basel, it's Roche, uh, there's Novartis, a lot of the drugs that we take that better our lives in the healthcare space originate from, uh, from Switzerland. A lot of the commodities we use as humanity kind of run through Switzerland or manage through uh, Switzerland. And so there's quite a lot that we as humanity owe this country over the last, I would say, what is it, 800 plus years of stability and of actually being ahead of the curve when it comes to um, creating innovation that matters. Um, and I think that over the last 15 years, and not many people know, a lot of what's referred to today, and it's kind of no, every, every time the name is different, is impact investing also has quite a bit of a fertile ground here. I've had the privilege of talking to the, the panelists in, in preparation and learn uh, much myself. And I think, Benjamin, if, if you would be willing to open up with you know, some of the numbers, some of the framework of impact investing. You had mentioned $40 billion allocated to impact investment just last year. Um, if you can provide us with the opening remarks, and then we'll have Rosa give us a, a, a you know, bird's eye view. You know, Pique is 220 years old soon, right, as a bank. So that's quite a vantage point on, you know, how does institutional money drive change and an impact. And we'll hear from Marta on, you know, a bit of the grassroots elements and where the Switzerland fit in. And then, obviously, per, per the conversation, uh, we'll engage further. So, Benjamin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jonathan. Well... Uh, this data you, you shared is about a, a report that came out last year on social uh, private a asset impact funds. It's called uh, it's a firm called Tameo, and uh, indeed they so they identified the, the private impact asset managers. And they had somehow like 500 of them, and uh, on the assets on the management the biggest share was Switzerland. And well, and from that, the biggest share in those private assets is microfinance. You mentioned 15 years ago, my business partner, Cedric, he co-founded Blue Orchard. That was the first microfinance manager. And uh, as you may know, when we talk about impact investing today, most of the money channeled into impact investing private assets is in microfinance. And you have Drew Orchard, then you have responsibility. So the two leaders, well, they were taken over by English managers. That's, uh, well, their, their destiny, right? But they are still Swiss. And uh, our firm, we were born also in Geneva, and we're focused on, on private debt in Latin America and more agri and food. But it's, uh, I believe it's, the, the fertile ground for that in Switzerland is the fact that there are so many investors here. I mean, it's a safe place. Uh, well, good quality of life, good banking services, right? Uh, we, uh, during the COVID, the real estate prices went up because there were less measures, less constraints. I mean, Switzerland is a, is a good place to live and a good place to host your money, right? And there we have like 13,000 foundation also. And uh, so all this ecosystem and these people around here are open to hear about what you can do with your money that has a positive impact in investment. So that's a bit the overview I wanted to give on. Thank you, thank you very much. So, so uh, Rosa, I mean, again, PICTE as an institute, you know, is also related to some of what's going on here. Um, but I think there's an institutional perspective here on how capital allocation drives 
you know, change for the better and, and really nobody has a better vantage point than, than the bank and, and yourself. Can you share your perspectives with us on that? And then, and then um, we'll take it from there and discuss a bit on the grassroots and then talk about some, some pertinent, you know, current events as they relate to impact investment coming out of, of, of Switzerland. Thank you, and thank you, all of you for being here. Just reference to Picte, um, for those of you that don't know, and I didn't know, I learned, uh, Picte is the bank through which uh, the Jewish agency financed the world of independence, so the Bank of the Haganah. So that's you know, the link between uh, you know, Picte and you know, this event also. But going back to what uh, Benjamin was saying before, um, I think, you know, that Switzerland is very well positioned uh, in this, you know, uh, mainstreaming of the impact investing world for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, we are, you know, a huge financial hub. Um, at the moment, we take care of around 7 to 8 trillion of assets. And it's a financial app that is specialized in asset management, so where we invest, and with a very conductive regulatory framework. Regulatory uh, in, in Switzerland, um, is very, the regulator is very attentive to what is happening and supporting, actually, the business, which sometimes doesn't happen in other, in other places. There is a lot of self-regulation. So coming from bottom up, the conversation that banks have with the regulator are for, the, for making the business not for limiting it. So extremely important there. Um, being, having eight or seven to eight trillion of assets and being specialized in asset management, there is a lot of funding. There is a lot of money that can go there. Very important. Second point, according to me, is innovation. You mentioned innovation. You know, I think you know, that Switzerland is for the 11th time in a row, you know, the first country in the world for the Global Innovation Index. And if you look between you know, the different uh, uh, you know, components of this index, you will realize that one of the important things that we do in Switzerland that others do not is uh, what they call um, the connection between input and output. So it's about research, but it's about research and making it happen in products and function. You know? So this connection, you know, creating, having ideas, but actually making it happen extremely important for us. And why we are that innovative? Because we have, since long, uh, not, we didn't have a lot of uh, you know, um, natural matter you know, to, to work with, so we invested in R&D, research and development. We invested in a university, financed universities. So, and this is where the innovation comes from. Last but not least, I think you know, one point that is crucial and goes into the direction of uh, you know, impact investing is the fact that since, uh, you know, since ever, Switzerland has been one of the places where the majority of international organizations are. So we have 80, uh, sorry, we have 40 international organizations, around 450 non-profit based in Switzerland. Based in Switzerland because of the conductive environment, based in Switzerland because here you can have the connection. All those international organizations have an history of for good, if we come back, go back to the tech for good. Uh, they have um, you know, an history of trying to make that impact, probably more from the philanthropy perspective. But this is something that the investing world needs. This is what, where impact investors need to understand how do we measure that impact that we really want. So, and this is all come together with the Swiss opportunity for impact investing. So, so in other words, the, the ability for Switzerland to convene is also important. Absolutely. So the fact that, as, as we said, probably everybody's fridge has something from Nestle, everybody's medical cabinet has something from Roche and Novartis, uh, Tetra Pak, I mean, so many companies that we don't necessarily understand and realize are at the back end of what we consume globally, ultimately end up convening with the World Health Organization, with you know, other organizations in Geneva, um, I think that was, and it's an interesting case study when, when, which is actually to an extent, at least for the time being, jury is still out, was a, was a failed attempt by Facebook with Libra. When Facebook wanted to introduce its currency, it chose to do it in Geneva. It chose to actually have its institution or the foundation for you know, the digital currency be in, in Geneva. So I think there's an element that you're uh, alluding to here, which is the convening power. The fact that the conversation happens here and it happens with uh, CEOs that have a decision power um, to, make, to make a difference. So, so thanks for that. That's a very interesting kind of just being able to run the conversation uh, at that level is, is something that comes, comes with the territory, uh, literally. 
Now, Martha, I, I guess a couple of things to hear from you around that. So we've heard around you know, the institutional dimension. We've heard the numbers. We understand the, the scale. What does it look like on the ground? And specifically, you've, you've dedicated some of your recent years bottom up on areas of diversity, uh, female, you know, female representation in sustainability. Can you share some of that? And, and to sort of where is Switzerland leading the way on that front? Sure, thank you for having me here today. Uh, so we all agree that Switzerland is really a country that has a big fertile ground, although 1971 was the last canton that allowed women to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Since then, things have accelerated very much. And I can say um, the female world is very hungry for change. Uh, men, just to mention that there will be in a uh, few years from now 10 trillion US dollars in hands of women transitioning from inheritance or from business owners. So women are, from a global perspective, really getting grip. And that grip, women, get, women gaining financial power, is gonna have implications on the world. Uh, looking from a Swiss perspective, we spoke about female um, health uh, companies, uh, femtechs. AVA is one of those that is really important. It was founded in Switzerland. It also uh, has its headquarters in San Francisco. There are many other, uh, Olga Feldmeier, she is the CEO of Smart Valor, uh, just to mention a few. So the ground here is really full of female founders who really want to change, uh, make a change and who are full of drive. And at the same time, there are the institutions such as uh, Rosa's organization and yours, who are really seeing also the potential looking from the female perspective. Um, when we speak about uh, finance, also the topic of gender lens investing has grown exponentially, I'm sure uh, Rosa will uh, possibly say also something about this, so I'll leave this up to her. Um, also the Swiss uh, government, at, as it is, is very supportive of female founders. There's a big ecosystem that supports female entrepreneurs bottom up. So I can really confirm, uh, not from only a gender perspective, from, but uh, generally Switzerland is a very good country for new innovation. Uh, so, so it's, let's take it to the next level, right? So we've agreed that, you know, between the multinationals and Eric uh, mentioned, you know, the power of multinationals, you know, decision by the CEO of Nestle, decision by CEO of some of these big companies can really make a difference on supply chain that, that has a ripple effect across, you know, some other industries as well. Um, where do we, where do you guys see risks for, you know, impact investing coming out of Switzerland? So there's a strength in the convening power. There's a strength in the power of the multinationals. Um, you know, is it tied to the performance of the, of the, you know, Swiss economy? Is the whole Euro Swiss going to be an issue? Like, what are the risks that, that may kind of impact uh, where impact investing is going again? Uh, Eric and, and previously we're mentioning, you know, with inflation going up, with energy prices going up, some of the ESG goals, you know, um, are, are at risk of, of efficacy. How does Switzerland lead actually in a, in a dynamic that might be a bit challenging for, for impact investing? And feel free to, to comment, uh, you know, from your own perspective. I will start. Yeah. Um, I see, uh, you know, two different perspectives. One perspective is you were talking about the institutional investors. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is one place where we believe that there is a lot that can happen is the collaboration between private and public. And there we lead. Because in, in Switzerland, I mean, uh, probably you know about the Seiko. They were actually the first one going into the microfinance, even before, you know, the commercial one and, 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 and then Blue Orchard. And uh, there are a lot of, uh, there is a lot happening there. So the public-private. And this is, at the same time, a huge opportunity and a risk. You know, uh, the risk is not being able to um, understand properly the possibilities behind blended finance, for example. The risk is uh, um, going back into distinguishing between philanthropy and, uh, and, and investing. This is, you know, one risk that could be, um, you know, materializing if the pension funds and, you know, that own a lot of the trillions that we have here in Switzerland do not start changing their perspective. We believe, or I believe that already years ago, we have understood that the fiduciary duty of the institutional investor is to go into the direction of, of the impact, simply because this is a long term. But the risk, as for everyone here, is what Mark Carney calls the tragedy of the horizon. So the short term versus the long term. And this is, you know, across investors. And I... Leave it to my colleagues. Uh, thank you. 
I would uh, like to add on what Rosa said, just highlighting uh, the topic that is going around in the financial world about definition and measurement. So how do we define impact? How do we define sustainability? And how do we measure it? Which uh, provider of information do we use? So the entire sustainability impact investing, investing for good world is in a, let's say, upside down or in a turmoil because what do we use as a reliable source? Uh, I agree that it's a, it's a challenge. I think. With Switzerland, what we mention is that it's a very stable country, of course, uh, but also you mentioned innovation, but sometimes stability and innovation mm -hmm. don't do well together. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some, yes, some, uh, uh, sometimes some about definitions or just concepts, uh, Arie said buzzwords, sometimes there are like today is happening some polarization, you know, on, on ideas, on, on terms ESG or uh, sustainable finance or what, what, what is impact. And uh, the, my experience with the, the, the Swiss authorities is that we decided to create a fund from Switzerland, but in Luxembourg because it was too complex and too costly to create one in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And also because we want to attract the European market to our fund. And if you have a Swiss fund, it's harder than if it's in Luxembourg. But the good thing is that Luxembourg and Switzerland, they go well together. Yeah. Well, you, uh, <laughs> Rosa knows that yeah. at Pictet. So, but it's just that we have our regulator, FINMA, that is, mm -hmm. that is good, but it's also very slow. And, uh, and so that's where I see the limitation for you know, here we have lots of entrepreneurs, of venture capitalists, innovation. Uh, you want to go fast, you want to, uh, to raise money, or you want to, uh, to get connections, or to get a permit. Or, and, and here, so the startup universe is starting well in Lausanne, HSC, uh, sorry, UPFL, etc. But still, I see a risk that maybe it remains, uh, or impact, or... or uh, remains in a kind of category of do-gooder and uh, an yeah. exception, and that the mainstream responsible investing goes also like, uh, sorry, I have to cut short, but the, uh, like uh, just a joke or people don't believe in it because there's too much yeah. greenwashing. Yeah. But th there is, it's the simplification that people tend to do in their mind mm -hmm. because it's easier, but it's all, the, all of them are very complex and need the, the attention of the authorities, of the investors, of the corporates. And, uh, but here, it's a good ground for that Switzerland is, but with risks, yeah. So, so, so if, I, if I, and we'll take the last, uh, the last kind of round of quick, uh, quick points um, to, to summarize. As you know, I just came from, from Geneva. I'm, I'm a sort of half Swiss. I'm, I married a, a Swiss and our, uh, we have four children and we spend a lot of time here. We just came from Geneva where there is, a, you know, the headlines towards the winter around, you know, will there be enough electricity? You know, questions that I would never anticipate to see in Switzerland. There is a World Economic Forum that took a very important stance, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Russia. There are a lot of things that are happening as initiatives in Switzerland over the last decade to sort of make sure that when the world goes in turmoil, actually people will come, to your point about COVID, will come to Switzerland and will enable it to continue to grow. So maybe just a quick point on how you guys see the next short, short term, not the t long horizon, right? The coming year, energy, you know, political turmoil globally, is this going to be something that impacts or affects Switzerland in its ability to continue to stand behind the impact investment? Or it's going to be just, you know, kind of a little bit of the move of the needle and Switzerland actually maybe the more turmoil in the world, the more kind of sovereignty goes back on at the expense of globalization, Switzerland has a role to play, an even bigger role to play when it comes to impacts. Just quick comments before we conclude. We have a minute and a half. We're going to be mindful of, of the time. Yeah, um, I will really be short. The latest IPCC report, um, you know, a few months ago uh, was mentioning all the risks, but actually the one published in April was publishing, you know, which are the solutions. Uh -huh. So really, let's put our energy into the solution, because this is actually a tipping point. We are at the tipping point. There are the solution, and let's grasp this opportunity. And this is actually what Switzerland should do, and we together should do. look at the opportunity, because uh, we may not have these opportunities in 10 years. Thank you. It's very helpful. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>
I fully agree with what, what Rosa said, and I would like to add on that Switzerland still has a unique position in the world and also responsibility from a sociological or a international political perspective. So I don't see Switzerland as coming into a state of uncertainty or insecurity. Um, passing uh, on to you. <laughs> I agree. I don't know about the winter. I hope there'll be snow. <laughs> key. Uh, but I know that the summer was one of the driest we ever had. If you have a garden in Switzerland, uh, uh, most likely you lost some plants. So people are getting worried about that. My fear is that, so I don't, I'm not scared about the Swiss and the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that I'm scared that, scared. My worry is that too much money goes in Switzerland, feel mm -hmm. safe, invest in blue chips, and then we, our greed and our just uh, laziness uh, makes us invest in, you know, yeah. those uh, index or whatever, and, and we don't invest to, uh, to ventures, to uh, uh, Israel, in uh, Latin America where I work. Here is what, where is the money is needed and where investment, where managers are needed and, and not, well, the Nestle and the big guys, I think they are served. Yeah, so to summarize, <laughs> The world is going to turmoil. You guys are not worried. Just focus on the solutions and take risks. Thank you, everybody. And I hope this was useful and helpful.